next one is intermittent fasting or time restricted feeding. That whole bucket. Yeah, what's the difference between C and D again? C is may need more research. Only put effort here if A and B are already taken care of, and D is not worth most people's time or money, but it's not harmful. I mean, I don't even know that I would say that. So here's the thing with intermittent fasting, right? Like, I think it's a useful strategy for some people to maintain a healthy body weight, right? I also think for some people, and again, we, we should probably define intermittent fasting because it means different things to different people. But so intermittent fasting, I would define as fasting for at least 24 hours. Mm. Shrinking the window you eat into eight or 12 or whatever, I would call time-restricted eating, right? Mm -hmm. So both of those, though, I think about very similarly in that they are both useful strategies for some people to maintain a healthy body weight. There is a whole movement out there that tries to make the case that time-restricted eating and or intermittent fasting has health benefits beyond that. And the literature, in my view, at least in the animal studies, is pretty clear that's not the case unless you also calorically restrict. Mm -hmm. So the benefits of intermittent fasting and time-restricted feeding have not been separated from the benefits of caloric restriction. And I have seen nothing to make me believe that there are benefits from either of those strategies beyond caloric restriction. Okay, so I just think that's important to appreciate. But I do believe there are some people where these are useful tools to help them maintain a healthy body weight. Is it essential? No. Is it beneficial for most people? I don't know. It, uh, but are there any benefits beyond just a tool to maintain healthy body weight? I haven't seen any data. So yeah, I think more research needs to be done to establish whether or not there are benefits outside of that. Having said that, personally, I think there are better places to spend our research funds and way too much money is being spent to study intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating, in my view. Is it a D or an F? I don't know. It, it could it be depends. harmful. I think that's the question. Yes, I do believe that intermittent fasting can be harmful. I do believe that some people take it too far. It can cause psychological problems in some people. It can cause loss of lean mass in some people if they're not taking steps to maintain lean mass. That's true for weight loss as well. So anyways, I don't know. I've gone on a little bit of a rant yeah, just yeah. because I get frustrated with how much bad information there is out there around intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating. Okay, well, I'm going to put it D, just because there's probably some people maybe who benefit. Okay, resveratrol is awful lonely down there. Yeah, we'll, all right. We'll, no, no, put it, leave it in D. We'll see what I don't, else. I don't know if I ever told along. you, but before we connected, I read a, a, a popular longevity book, and I walked away thinking, like, I have to time restrict, you know, my feeding. So I went down to one hour eating window. It was 23 hour <laughs> fasting, one meal a day. That's and almost up, what I would call intermittent fasting. Yeah, one meal a day is a, is a variant of time restricted dude, eating. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I got down to, so I usually walk around around 205. I got down to like 185, mm -hmm. and people were concerned. Yeah, like I looked not great in yeah. terms of because I lost mostly muscle. Yeah, one of these days maybe I'll I'll tell a story about a former grad student of mine who tried one meal a day, and uh, it definitely has psychological effects in some people. Um, but yeah, it can it it can be absolutely. It's very hard not to lose weight if you are if you have been eating a certainly if you've been eating a typical American diet, the standard American diet SAD sad. Uh, it's very hard not to lose weight if you go to eating one meal a day. Can you cram in 3,000 calories in one meal? Sure, you could, mm -hmm. but uh, most people aren't going to do that, at least not every day. So then the question is, are you eating a healthy diet? And what is the impact on your body composition while that's happening? And what are the psychological impacts? And I think it's complicated, but it's going to be very individual. But in general, that is a caloric restriction paradigm right? And so there are the effects that go along with caloric restriction. If you're losing weight, almost by definition, you are calorically deprived. You're calorically, you're in caloric imbalance at least, yeah. right? And so that's a caloric restriction effect. And you may be able to achieve the same caloric restriction effect on weight in a more healthy way by using a different strategy to yeah. achieve caloric imbalance. Like dietary restriction or ca counting your but calories. Dietary restriction is sort of a catch-all for all of these things, right? Uh -huh. So yes, right. So tracking calories, maybe you know, still eating whatever it is, three meals a day, but your total calories are still less than calories expended, increasing exercise. There are all sorts of different strategies to achieve caloric imbalance that will cause you to lose weight. This is, I think, the thing that makes the time-restricted eating so compelling or intermittent fasting is it's easy. 
mm -hmm. conceptually for people to stick to. Yeah, I'm just going to eat one meal a day. I can eat whatever I want. I'm just going to eat one meal a day. I don't think that's a particularly healthy mindset, but that's an easy mindset for a lot of people to um, adopt. I think for me, it turned eating into just like a light switch instead of a dimmer switch. So it's sort of easy just like either I'm eating or I'm not. Yeah. And you end up with a small enough window, you end up yeah. being restricted. But uh, but again, we've gone on for a while, but I just think it's really important for people to understand there is really no good evidence that there are benefits associated with either time-restricted eating or intermittent fasting beyond caloric restriction. There are clear benefits in certain contexts from caloric restriction. In longevity, lots and lots of animal studies showing you can increase lifespan, improve health span metrics. In people who are overweight or obese, lots of benefits that accrue when you get to a healthy weight. And the only way to do that is by being in caloric imbalance. And caloric restriction is the easiest way to achieve that. I think the question is, is are there any benefits to these strategies if you're not calorically restricted. And there is this perception that has been sort of, you know, amplified by uninformed influencers that that's been shown and it just hasn't. And that I think is where the disconnect comes in. Like autophagy comes to mind is what people well, think. Well, so or? autophagy is a biological process that gets induced by inhibition of mTOR. And if you fast long enough, you will induce autophagy I think the question, and there's some reason to believe that's beneficial in certain contexts. The question though is, if you intermittent fast long enough to induce autophagy, let's say you fast for 48 hours, but you don't caloric restrict, so you eat twice as much the next day, or is the detriment from doing that going to offset any benefits you might've gotten from autophagy? So is it the autophagy? Is it the caloric restriction? Is it the overall context that that matters right and i and that's where i think there's this disconnect that you know the idea that just just increasing autophagy in and of itself if everything else is equal is going to give you some health benefit that really hasn't been shown okay well just to end on a good note just me spending too much time and sort of like watching the youtube videos of this, yeah. sort of this world since the drop of Outlive by Peter Tia, yeah. I've noticed a shift away from IF a little bit. Yeah, and Peter's interesting because he was big in fasting at one point, and now I think has moved at least a little bit away from it as a as a cure all. Right? Again, I think for certain people it can be a very powerful strategy. If you, if somebody wants to, you know, if they're overweight, they want to get to a healthy weight, and they want to try it, great try it. I would just say, pay attention to your diet quality one. So don't go in with the idea that I can eat one meal a day or I can skip eating, you know, two days a week and then I can eat whatever I want. That's just dumb. Um, so focus on diet quality. And then I would also say, think about resistance training or at least monitor your lean mass to make sure you aren't losing, disproportionately losing lean mass while you're losing weight. Great. All right.